What's up everybody, welcome back to Words of Wisdom Here we are on day 11, August 2020 Proverbs 11 A false ba balance is an abomination to Yahuwah But a just weight is his delight And we see this in different places in the scripture God hates injustice Basically, this is about being fair, about dealing fairly in your dealings, in your business. And we see most of the world is an abomination to Yahuwah because false balance. I mean, think about. I mean, anything, you compare anything to it in this world. So much injustice. This life ain't fair. We all know that. But a just weight is his delight. When pride comes, then comes dishonor. But with the humble is wisdom. And we know God hates pride. We read in Proverbs 8.13. The fear of the Lord, the fear of Yahuwah, is to hate evil. Pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverted mouth I hate. Luke 14.11. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. That's what Jesus said. And then James, the brother of Jesus, said, Humble yourself in the presence of the Lord, and he will exalt you. When pride comes, then comes dishonor. But with the humble is wisdom. The integrity of the upright will guide them. But the crookedness of the treacherous will destroy them. Riches do not profit in the day of wrath. Speaking about the in the end times. But righteousness delivers from death. And the only way to have that righteousness, the righteousness of God, is through Jesus Christ, through faith in Him. Righteousness delivers from death. And also, our actions, because it comes down to the wise and foolish virgins. Are you ready or are you not? If you're ready, you're walking in righteousness, and you'll be delivered from death. But we know riches do not profit in the day of wrath. It don't matter how much money you have, and a scripture just came to my mind. Let me pull it up real quick. It's in Isaiah 24. It's all about that day. It says, Behold, Yahuwah lays the earth waste, devastates it, distorts its surface, and it scatters its inhabitants. And the people will be like the priest, the servant like his master, the maid like her mistress, the buyer like the seller, the lender like the borrower, the creditor like the debtor. See, everyone's going to be the same. In that day, the money's not going to matter. Ezekiel 7.19 says, They will fling their silver into the streets, and their gold will become an abhorrent thing. Their silver and their gold will not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They cannot satisfy their appetite, nor can they fill their stomachs. Because that money doesn't matter. Riches do not profit in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. The righteousness of the blameless will smooth his way. And Jesus told us in Matthew 5.48, Therefore you are to be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Of course we're going to all make mistakes along the way, but... 
that's what we need to strive for, perfection. To walk it out perfectly just like Jesus did. And we need to be in the habit of, before we do things, asking ourselves, what would Jesus do? The righteousness of the blameless will smooth his way, but the wicked will fall by his own wickedness. And that's what we see in a few scriptures. Proverbs 10.28, the hope of the righteous is gladness. But the expectation of the wicked perishes. And Psalm 141. Keep me from the jaws of the trap which they have set for me. And from the snares of those who do iniquity. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I pass by safely. Psalm 35. 8, let destruction come upon him unawares. And let the net which he, which he hid catch himself. And did that very destruction let him fall? The righteousness of the blameless will smooth his way, but the wicked will fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright will deliver them. See, if, we, if we're walking in the, on the narrow path, if we're walking in an upright way, in righteousness, we have confidence that God will deliver us. But if we're walking in sin, we at least we sh at least should fear him, fear his judgment. The righteousness of the upright will deliver them, but the treacherous will be caught by their own greed. When a wicked man dies, his expectation will perish, and the hope of strong men perishes. The righteous is delivered from trouble. Hallelujah. But the wicked takes his place. And that's what we just read with the, the wicked falling into, into his own trap. The righteous is delivered from trouble. The righteous is delivered from the trap set for him but the wicked takes his place falls into the, into his own trap with his mouth the godless man destroys his neighbor but through knowledge and keep in mind knowledge that's the same thing as wisdom understanding all these other terms is referring to Jesus and the word of God but through knowledge through Jesus the righteous will be delivered. With his mouth the godless man destroys his neighbor, but through knowledge the righteous will be delivered. When it goes well with the righteous, the city rejoices. And when the wicked perish, there is joyful shouting. By the blessing of the upright, a city is, is exalted. But by the mouth of the wicked, it is torn down. Now, I don't have a complete understanding on this, on this part, on, on a lot of these parts, but on this part with the city. But... You know what, let me just continue on. I don't want to uh, mishandle the word. He who despises his neighbor lacks sense. But a man of understanding keeps silent. So he who despises his neighbor lacks sense. We read in Mark 12. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and with all your mind and all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. See, love is the most important thing. Loving our neighbor is the second most important commandment. But he who despises his neighbor 
like snaps. But a man of understanding keeps silent. He who goes about as a talebearer or a gossiper reveals secrets. But he who is trustworthy conceals a matter. Where there is no guidance, the people fall. But in the abundance of counselors, there is victory. He who is guarantor for a stranger will surely suffer for it. But he who hates being a guarantor is secure. A guarantor meaning you promise to to do this or that for somebody. Uh, more in particular with money. And you know, I've learned my lesson with this one. He who is a guarantor for a stranger will surely suffer for it. Yeah, I'm I'm in debt. <laughs> you know, I got uh I have a lot of bills and I I've learned over time, you know, it's uh, easier said than done, basically. And you'll in, in the end suffer for it. He who is a guarantor for a stranger will surely suffer for it. But he who hates being a guarantor is secure. A gracious woman attains honor. And ruthless men attain riches. The merciful man does himself good, but the cruel man does himself harm. And we read in James 2, verse 13, Her judgment will be merciless to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. That's why we gotta be we gotta be like God in every way. We gotta be merciful like He is merciful. We gotta love like He loves. We gotta be patient like He's patient. We need to strive to be just like Him. Just like our Savior said, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. The wicked earns deceptive wages because the the wages of this world, the, the money in this world, especially the way the wicked get it, it doesn't matter. The stuff in this life don't matter. It doesn't matter. What matters is what's next. The wicked earns deceptive wages, but he who sows righteousness, if that's what you're living, if you're living in righteousness, gets a true reward, and that's what we see with the treasure in heaven that we see in different places here. I'm going to read some of these scriptures. The same thing is said in multiple scriptures. Uh, let's see. Matthew 9, 20, 19, 21. Jesus said to him, If you wish to be complete, go and sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. Mark 10, 21. Looking at him, Jesus felt a love for him and said, one thing you lack, go and sell all you possess and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Come follow me. Luke twelve thirty three. Sell your possessions and give to charity. Make yourself money belts which do not wear out, and an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near or moth destroys. And Luke eighteen twenty two. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, one thing you still lack, sell all that you possess and distribute to the poor, 
and you shall have treasure in heaven. Come and follow me. And this is an issue. You know, this is an issue. <laughs> this is a major issue. That I, I see in the body of Christ. You know, we're, we're comfortable with what we have. We're comfortable with living how we want to live. And we don't go out of our way to help the poor. Or at least most of us don't go out of our way to help the poor. And uh, to put everything we have or everything we can do into the kingdom of God. And that's what we need to do. We need to give it give it all up. And you know, I'm myself as well. I mean, I'm not going to say what I do or what I have done, but you know, we need to give it give it all up. We need to be willing to basically give give up everything we have in this life and in order to build the kingdom of God in order to help the poor and so on he who is steadfast in righteousness will attain to life we read in Matthew twenty four thirteen, but he who endures to the end, he will be saved. See, it's a walk. It's a daily walk. He who is steadfast in righteousness will attain to life. Not that we have to do anything to earn our salvation. There's nothing we can do do to earn our salvation or anything. But, but it's more than just saying, "I believe." It's a it's a relationship. Think about a husband and wife. What if the I mean, because Jesus is the husband. What if what if we as the wife were were to just say, "I do," and then just go off and live however, not pay any attention pay any attention to the husband. You know, we need to be dedicated. We need to be dedicated to God and endure to the end. No matter what. He who is steadfast in righteousness will attain to life. And he who pursues evil will bring about his own death. The perverse in heart are an abomination to Yahweh. But the blameless in their walk are his delight. The perverse in heart are an abomination to the Lord. Matthew 5 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. We have to have a pure heart, pure mind. I mean, that's what it comes down to at the end of the day having a pure heart. I mean, we can do the physical, we can keep the com the physical commandments. We can keep them by the letter. We can physically not, not murder. We can physically not commit adultery. But if we're lusting after women, or in, in the case of women, lusting after men, or if we're hating our brother, or hating our neighbor, or committing murder and adultery in our heart. It comes down to the heart of the matter. And God sees what's inside. God sees our heart. And that's what really matters. So the pure in heart will see God. The perverse in heart are an abomination to Yahuwah. But the blameless in their walk. Jesus said, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. But the blameless in their walk are his delight. Assuredly, the evil man will not go unpunished. The judgment of God is coming, even on the house of the Lord. I just pray He will have mercy on everybody, you know. But 
may his will be done in everything. Assuredly, the evil man will not go unpunished, but the descendants of the righteous will be delivered. So even the descendants of the righteous will be delivered. As a ring of gold and a swine's snout. So as a ring of gold and a pig's nose. So is a beautiful woman who lacks discretion. And so women represent believers. So as a believer, if we lack discretion, if we're just living however, living how, however we want to, we make the name of God look bad. We read in Revelation three one, to the angel in the church, to the angel of the church of Sardis, write, he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars says this, I know your deeds, that you have a name that you are alive, but you are dead. See, they had the appearance. And this is speaking to one-seventh of believers these days. So, a seventh of believers, this is talking about. It says, I know your deeds, that you have a name that you are alive, but you are dead. They have the appearance of righteousness, the appearance of being men and women of God. But inside, they're not right. And that's what this is, as a ring of gold and a pig's nose and a swan's snout. So as a beautiful woman who lacks discretion. The desire of the righteous is only good. See, the righteous seek good, only seek good. Nothing else. But the expectation of the wicked is wrath. But if you're living if you're living wickedly, if you're walking on the broad road, you you expect the wrath of God. If you're screwing up, you, you expect the wrath of God. At least you should, or you're completely blind. There is one who scatters, yet increases all the more. And I guess I don't have it pulled up. There's one who scatters. Oh, it's right here. Matthew 12, 30. He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters so if you're not gathering with him if you're not building the kingdom if you're not spreading the gospel working for the kingdom but increasing all the more if you're increasing yourself and your own wealth but not worrying about the kingdom that's what it's speaking of there is one who scatters by not gathering with him by not working for the kingdom and yet increases all the more for himself. There's one who scatters and yet increases all the more. And yet there's one who withholds what is justly due. And yet it results in only in want. And we read in Malachi 3.10. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. So that there may be food in my house. And test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. See, when we give to God, when we give, put money, put our, our money uh, or our resources or our time toward the kingdom, toward what's right, God repays us sevenfold. Hallelujah. There is one who scatters and yet increases all the more. 
And there's one who withholds what is justly due by not contributing to the kingdom, and yet it results only in what? The generous man will be prosperous. As I was just speaking about, you know, if you're generous, if you're giving, God is going to give back to you. The generous man will be prosperous, and he who waters he will himself be watered. So if you're giving to others, God's going to give it to you. He who withholds grain, the people will curse him. But blessing will be on the head of him who sells it. Wow. You know, I, when I was uh, putting this together a little bit ago, I didn't see this, but going through it again, I, I see what this is speaking of right here. It says, He who withholds grain, the people will curse him, but the blessing, a blessing will be on the head of him who sells it. So, So let's go over to Matthew 25. And this is what it's uh, referring to. For it is just like the like a man, speaking to the kingdom of heaven, it is just like a man who is about to go on a journey, who called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, which is, you know, a, the amount of money or uh, basically ability or uh, you know ability or, or, or whatever to, to work for the kingdom uh, understanding or whatever he, he gives us whether it's understanding uh, ability um, money what, whatever we can do for the kingdom so what to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, each according to his own ability. And he went on his journey. Immediately the one who had the five talents went and traded with them and gained five more talents. So this is speaking about having the word of God. The money is the word of God. And he went out and used what he had, his, his understanding and his ability to multiply and bring more people in, into the kingdom in the same manner and he gave gave five more talents in the same manner the one who received two gained two more the one who received one talent went away and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money now after a long time the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them the one who had received five talents came up and bought five and brought five more talents saying master you have entrusted five talents to me see I have gained five more talents his master said to him well done good and faithful slave you are faithful in a few things I will put you in charge of many things enter into the joy of your master also the one who had received two talents came up and said master you entrusted two talents to me see I have gained two more talents his master said to him well done good and faithful slave you are faithful with a few things I will put you in charge of many things enter into the joy of your master. And the one who had received the one talent came up and said, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what is yours. But his master answered and said to him, You wicked, lazy slave. You knew that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I had no seed. Then you ought to put my money in the bank. And on my arrival, I would have received my money back with interest. Therefore, take away the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. For everyone who has, more shall be given, and, the, and he will have an abundance. But the one who does not have, even what he does have will be taken away. So, he who withholds grain, the people will curse him. A blessing will be on the head of him who sells it. So the one who sells it, if you're 
spreading the word of God. This is the the one who had five talents and gained five more. The blessing will be on the one who sells it, because he's out here working for the kingdom. But the one who withholds grain, the people will curse him, because he buried his master's money, and he didn't do anything with his abil with his ability, with his knowledge of the truth of the kingdom, with the truth of Jesus Christ. He didn't do anything with with that knowledge and with that uh, understanding. He withheld the grain. With he who withholds grain and the, the people will curse him, but blessing will be on the head of him who sells it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. He who diligently seeks good seeks favor. Favor. But he who seeks evil, evil will come to him. And you reap what you sow, and this uh what we read here in Galatians 6, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh, and the flesh meaning our own desires, will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. For... Allowing, to let, allowing God to work through us and change us and do His will. Let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we not, do not grow weary. He who trusts in his riches will fall. And we read in Luke 12, then he said to them, Beware and be on your guard against every form of greed. For not even when one has an abundance does his life consist of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man was very productive. And he began reasoning to himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no place to store my crops? Then he said, This is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years to come. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your soul is required of you. And now who, who will own what you have prepared? He who trusts in his riches will fall. But the righteous will flourish like the green leaf. He who troubles his own house will inherit wind. And the foolish will be servant to the wise hearted. See, there's going to be different places in the kingdom, different positions in the kingdom. Not everybody in the kingdom is going to be a king or a priest. People are going to have different positions. And the foolish will be servant to the wise hearted. To the wise. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he who what he who is wise wins souls. So if you're wise, if you're one of the wise virgin virgins. That's the people who are out here spreading the word of God, winning souls. And the fruit of the wise, the fruit of the righteous, the actions, the production of the righteous, is life. Is a tree of life. Which we're trying to we want everyone to come to the true, no true knowledge of Jesus Christ and to be able to eat of that tree of life. If the righteous will be rewarded in the earth, how much more the wicked and the sinner. And
and we read in 2 Corinthians 5.10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each, each one may be recompensed for his deeds in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. See, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's the judge, and every knee will bow to him. Everyone will confess that he's Lord. Unfortunately for most people, it's going to be too late. So don't waste your time. Don't waste your opportunities. We're living in the last days. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, call out to him today for the forgiveness of your sins, for the salvation of your soul. All this is real. All this is true. The Bible's true. Jesus is true. Jesus was prophesied about hundreds and even thousands of years before he came on the scene. And you can research it and even try to figure it out yourself, but the mathematical odds that one person could fulfill even eight of the prophecies is a... odds is a number beyond imagination. They compare it to taking silver dollars marking one silver dollar and filling the whole state of Texas with silver dollars two feet deep and reaching in and grabbing randomly grabbing the one that has a mark on it being the chances that one person could fulfill even eight prophecies in their lifetime Jesus fulfilled over 300 proving himself to be the son of God proving himself to be who the Bible says he is Jesus died for our sins God requires perfection in order to enter his, enter his kingdom. Jesus was that perfection. He lived a perfect life and still took on the punishment that he didn't deserve. Took on the punishment for our sins in order that through faith in him and what he did on the cross, we can be made right with God. So call out to Jesus today. We're living in the last days. Time is almost up. Almost up. Seriously. Call out to him. Don't waste your time. Stay strong, brothers and sisters. We're living in the last days. We're almost there. Let's be ready. Let's be on the alert. Let's spread the gospel. Spread the good news. The truth of Jesus Christ. The truth of the Bible. Because people need to know. People need to wake up. Many people are about to perish. Let's be right with him. Let's be ready. Thanks for tuning in. Love you guys. Shalom.